Now I've been told recently if I want to start getting more YouTube subscribers I should have a catchy intro but I'm assuming since you've here you've seen the thumbnail and the reason for being here is you want to paint Iron Warriors so hi I'm Ross this is Fauhammer Videos subscribe if you want otherwise let's get into it. Just a couple of touches to customize this one. I didn't feel like the heads, the beaky heads, suited the Mark VI body. And apparently in the lore, the Mark VI armor was actually rejected by the Iron Warriors Legion. But hey ho, I like the scale of the Mark VI, but I wanted it a bit more Iron Warrior-y. So with this, I just took one of the heads from the Betrayal at Kalf box set, along with one of the shoulder pads. And then to match that on his left-hand side, your right, I also found a 3D printed part, which had an Iron Warriors logo on it. The first stage of this is to prime the model in black. I used an airbrush primer, but you can use whatever black primer you like. So with all my speed painting videos, I like to say not only what I do, but why I do it. And at least then you can take some of that theory and color theory and apply it to create your own recipes. Here for the initial base coat, I'm using Rhinox Hide, and this is a very dark reddish brown. And that reddish brown gives us a warm tone, which will contrast brilliantly against the cool blues that we find in the silver. And whilst I'm using an airbrush here, you can just paint this on using a normal paintbrush. For the silver, I've chosen Blue Steel from the Dark Star range. This range is absolutely incredible. You'll find people like uh, Brushstroke Painting Guides, they recommend them quite frequently. This is an incredibly popular and undersung brand of paint. A lot of people will talk about Scale 75 paints and how they're the best ones. And in all honesty, these Dark Star metallics are identical in every way. Now, whilst Dark Star don't have the color ranges that you can get in Scale 75 as yet, the range of natural metallic colors is second to none. What I especially love is how smooth and reflective they are because the pigment in them is so ultra fine. And these are absolutely perfect for what we're doing now. So over the Rhinox Hide base, I have dry brushed on some blue steel. Again, I've chosen blue steel because you've got that slightly colder tone to it. You can't really see any blue in this steel, but it's just a way of saying it's a cooler steel color. And this will contrast immediately with the browns that we've put on as the base layer. Next up, we're using silver from Vallejo's Model Air range, and this is an incredibly potent silver, really strong in color. And whilst, yes, it's from an air range of paints, you can brush it on just fine. This is generally all round one of the best bright silver metallic paints on the market. The best thing about dry brushing this on is you get to retain some of that mottled effect that you get naturally from the dry brushing technique. And whilst these are the Artis Opus dry brushes, they're a lot smoother than what you would get if you use another brand's dry brushes, then you still get some of that surface level mottling, which is perfect because we want to leave some of the Rhinox in the recesses, even on flat surfaces, so that we've got a impression of a weathered and beaten steel. And with the highlight color, the best thing about metallics is when you dry brush them, they blend so smoothly because the medium's generally a lot more gel-like, so you get a lot more playtime with them than you would get from a natural acrylic paint. Uh, but with the highlight, all we're doing is just picking out the edges most of all, just to try and reinforce the shapes of the different forms of this miniature. Now, whilst Games Workshop and your typical painting approach would actually have you painting in reverse of what we're doing here, so they'll get you to start with generally the darker color and edge highlight. What I'm doing with this Eshin Grey is painting all the areas that are gonna be black. With speed painting, I generally tend to start with the mid-tone and then shade it down from there and give it a bit of highlight if necessary. So this mid-tone is a great step for the next part in the process. To paint the black areas, I'm using the Black Templar contrast paint along with the contrast medium. And I'm gonna thin it quite heavily so that it only flows into mostly the recesses, but gives us a general smooth coloring. And with this, I'm gonna paint area any area that I want to be black. So things like the power pack straps on the chest, uh, any of the softer armor areas, the weapon, and also the shoulder pads, which are the most important part. As for leaving highlights on the shoulder pads, well, it's just a case of quickly wetting and using my finger and then rubbing it off the uppermost areas. We're gonna cover these over anyway shortly with some more detail, so it's not gonna matter really how detailed our transition is. And having this little bit of hard edge will actually increase the look to the weathering on the finished result. 
As for the hazard stripe on the leg, well, I put this on here for two reasons. One, I didn't want to do an entire leg. Every time I've seen someone do this, I'm sorry, but to me that just, it tends to look like a ice cream cone whippy kind of, you know, yellow and black cornetto sort of thing. So I've avoided that. I've just done a stripe down the leg. And also this was to cover one of the mold lines that had scraped off a bit too harshly. So this also hides the edge that was picked up with the dry brushing. Now, another thing to talk about is the hazard stripes, because I know a lot of people struggle with these. Honestly, the best way to get them right is by cutting down some masking tape and using this as a stencil. To paint the hazard stripes, because they're masked off, it is super easy. And again, you can do this with a airbrush or with a dry brush, but I like the dry brush because it gives me more of, again, that mottled texture and beaten and worn look. To start off by covering the entire unmasked area in XV88, which is on the ochre side of the browns. It's a very light brown. Moving up from there, it's Avalon Sunset, which is an ochre yellow. And then finally, we're going in with Yariel Yellow just at the top to give it some highlights. And just to pick out the black areas a bit more, we're using some Corax White. We're not going to do a massive transition here through many colors. Just Corax White walked into a dry brush and then we're going to let this pick out all the edges on the armor and even just softly stipple in a bit of highlight to the top of the black areas on the shoulder pad. If this touches any of the silver or any of the yellow, it's not going to matter too much because those colors would be highlighted up. The brightest areas would be highlighted up to a white anyway. Try not to get it on there, but if you do, it's really not going to stand out at all. To increase the look of the weathering, we're going to thin down some streaking grime and we're just thinning this down with artist grade mineral spirit. Just slather this all over the model, make sure you get into all the recesses because that's where it needs to go. Again, this is kind of a 50-50 thin, but you can go thinner if you like, you can go thicker if you like, it depends how weathered you want the model to look. Once you've covered the whole model, just leave it to dry. Basically, what you're looking for is for all of the recesses not still to look wet and glossy. Once you've got that, that means the entire model is dry. Should take about 20 minutes to half an hour. If it's taking longer than that, then you might have applied it a bit too thick. Just wait longer because if you try to take it out before it's fully dried into the recesses, you're gonna take it out of the recesses easier than you are gonna take it off the surface. So you don't wanna do that. Leave it in the recesses, let it dry a bit longer. You've got anywhere up to two, three hours playtime with this before it's fully dried and set into the surface so just leave it a bit longer and then come in with a cotton bud or q-tip to clean off the flat areas also try dotting and dabbing so as you clean it off you'll find your q-tip or cotton bud whatever you call it is going to be picking up some of that color out of the recesses dot this back in and kind of use it to build up the grime on the surface of the model as much as you are taking it off and let it set in the sit and set in the lower areas on all the different parts the different forms on the surface of this miniature. So painting the eyes, start off by blacking out the eyes. I'm using my Artis Opus Series M size zero brush for this, and that's because the shorter bristles give me a lot more control. From there, it's just a case of adding Mephiston Red for the first three quarters of the eye, then apply some Evil Sun Scarlet to the first half of the eye, and then a small line of Flash Gits Yellow right at the front. If you're feeling particularly brave, you can also glaze in a glow from under the eye, which I struggled with here and made it look like my Space Marine is blushing. Finally, using some bold titanium white from Peracryl, which is just once again an absolutely incredible paint, we're going to paint the tiniest dot right at the back of each eye. And this is the bit where I panic and I hope I don't mess it up on camera, but do. As for basing, well, I'm not a big fan of basing. I want it basic, but a little bit interesting. So I'm starting with some Agrella Earth, and I'm just applying this to parts of the base. I don't want to go anywhere near the feet. The reason I don't tend to use a lot of these texture paints is because it is so easy to spread and get on the model, ruining all the paint job you've done so far. You can pop the model off the base, but the problem I find with that is then the model looks like he's floating on top of the scenery that you've built him into rather than being part of it. So I'm just applying this onto the top here and I'm smoothing out the edges with some water so that I don't get lots of cracks along the edge because as soon as I pick the model up they're just going to fall off. I'm not using a texture spreader I'm using a really really rubbish Citadel starter brush that you get in well you get it everywhere so uh, if you've got anything like this I highly recommend using that and then use some water and just feather out the edge. 
Now I'm using some of Geek Gaming Scenic's fast drying basing glue. This isn't PVA, but it's a different type of glue that actually dries kind of rubbery. It's really, really good for using when basing, using sands and things like that, and goes well with the Geek Gaming Scenic's range. So with this glue, I have a lot more control. And once again, I'm using the same rubbish old brush, and I'm gonna apply that neatly around the feet on this model. These base ready products from Geek Gaming are absolutely excellent because all you need to do is slap down some glue, which I said you've got a lot of control over, and then simply dip it into the pot and swirl it round. And with this Martian Earth one, for example, it's also pigmented. So if you just stick the Space Marine in and swirl him round, it'll also start to pigment the legs for you and give it some of that dusty look. For me, I want a little bit more control, so I'm taking these old weathering powders from Forge World, which I don't think they sell anymore. I've got their two rust colours, which essentially are dark orange and light orange, and I'm going to apply the light orange to the dark red sandy areas and the dark orange to the cracked and beaten earth areas, which will give me an overall orangey Martian earth colour with a lot of variety and powderiness to it. And as I apply this, I am going to let it touch the bottoms of the legs, just naturally. I'm not going to try and force it onto the legs so that that the model itself looks embedded within the environment without actually being buried into the texture paint that you would put on it. And then finally, to finish him off, once again, we are using the Vallejo 950 Black. I've said this, I can't say it enough, absolute best black. Go and get yourself a pot of this and then put down in the comments, thank you, you're so right, I've never tried this before. It's absolutely brilliant because so many people have done that on previous videos. So Vallejo, nine, Vallejo model color, 950 black, go get yourself a pot, it's absolutely incredible. And with this, yep, just base the rim and that's it, model complete. I'm for a gallery. So as I thank my patrons, let me just say, this was really, really fun to paint. I think you'll agree that for a quick speed paint job, this gives you some impressive and interesting looking results. I think the key here is getting the brown into the recesses so that we can get that contrast of color between shade and light. And then we've also got a hue contrast between the warm tones of the shadow and the cool tones of the highlight. Whereas most people with most chapters tend to go the other way. You tend to warm up the highlight, but here we've done it the opposite way. And I hope you'll agree that's given us an interesting result. Anyway, please let me know what other chapters you'd like me to paint, what's the most popular. Have a look at my big video that covers all of the chapters that we've painted the armors for thus far. And if there's anything you want me to get up and get onto YouTube first, then pop it down in the comments and I will try and get those videos up next. Until next time, thanks for watching. That's all from me, Fohammer out.